<laughs> but we love uh, Shohei Otani. Uh, we you saw it, you heard it. We we talked about it a lot last week where Shohei hit his 50 50 ball. He was in uh, down in Miami. Beautiful night down there while he had like one of the best nights ever of uh, in baseball history. 17 total bases, three home runs, two stolen bases, two doubles, and I'm sure I'm surprised he didn't close the game out too when he, he had just come out for a rehab outing and, and close the game out. But that ball that you're going to watch right here, that's his 50th home run ball. That ball itself is causing all the controversy this week. Um, a man by the name of Max Matus. James, have you heard of Max? I have heard of Max. Yes, Max. Max is now suing the, the, the man who ultimately came up with that ball and putting an injunction and telling him, no, you are not allowed to put, a, uh, put that ball up for auction because it is my ball. He was on the bottom of that scrum, and he said it was my ball, and Max, this big, muscly man, took the ball away from me. Um, James, how do you feel about Max's argument? Do you think there's an argument in to, to be able to say that that was his ball? Uh, I think that if my child ever said, hey, I want to sue because the other guy took my baseball, I would tell him, you're a pussy, get into the gym because you're not supposed to lose that baseball. That's the first thing I would think. Second of all, we all know if a baseball goes into the stands, last man standing gets the ball. Nobody complained last week when um, Anthony Rizzo hit a ball into the outfield that that some kid missed and another guy grabbed. There's no legal lawsuit every time that happens. So why is it a lawsuit now? Because this kid thinks that maybe he might get a couple of bucks out of it. And I give him all the credit in the world. I'm very litigious. I, I, I like lawyers and I would do the same thing. But I also know that it's complete horseshit. I definitely I, I'm I'm leaning on your side of this without a doubt. If you're out there, okay, this is the kind of the rule in the outfield, right? That ball comes to you. It is fair game until you get total control of that ball. If mm -hmm. you have full control of that ball, now it's a whole nother story. If well, all I know is that ball hit. It went into the bar out there, which used to be, by the way, used to be a full on enjoyable bar to be sitting in the bullpen and, and they had glass. You could see go-go dancers and people with body paint on. I was very distracted. Never, I pitched fine in Miami. I'm very surprised because I could actually focus once I got onto the field. Uh, but warming up was a very bad uh, focus for me. But that ball goes into the bar. Um, it's a scrum. Nobody had it clearly at that point. Dude, game on. Go get that ball. You could jump in the pile at the end. I, it doesn't even matter. If there's yeah. three guys on that ball and you want to jump on it, go for it because it's fair game. Did, to me, when you're seeing this and you're seeing this pile, I don't know which one's Max. I assume the kid in the red, um, in the red jersey. At, at the, I mean, dude, I'm seeing the guy in the gray have the ball like total total control and now if we saw a video where he, he straight up catches it and he's holding the ball and then somebody jumps him total that's a different argument right yeah completely different argument but i am sorry max i i want i i i i'll give it to you for trying but at the same time this is what, everything that's wrong there's unless there's a video evidence of you clearly holding that ball which i have not seen remotely ever once like we've seen the video hundreds of times now i haven't seen it once where where somebody had it clearly until the, the man at the end steps up with it it doesn't really matter though because the judge has already said i'm not i'm not filing an injunction the auction is going to go off as planned it's going to start off at what 500k for that ball and then you can buy it now it, so it's it's funny they kind of did an ebay thing with golden auctions it's four and a half million dollars buy it now but this <laughs> the auction starts at 500 grand until it reaches a certain threshold which i don't know uh it's a lot of money for a baseball okay I'm trying to think about this on the top of my head. Baseball's in history. Mm -hmm. Which ball do you think should get the most money? Which one would you want the most? So those are two separate questions. Okay. I'm going to put it out there because you're a Mets fan. Would you rather have the, the Shohei 50-50 ball or would you have the ball that landed foul in Johan Santana's no-hitter? I'd rather have the Otani ball. It's worth more. <laughs> Take the money out of it. Which one would you rather display? <sighs> I'd rather have the Otani ball. Okay. Okay. Um, would you rather have Judge's 63? Nope. Otani ball. Okay. There's only one piece of on-field memorabilia Bonds that I would say I would want more. Nope. Otani. 
um, Bonds is any of Bonds' home runs, nope. like record breakers, nothing. Nope. I'll Hank tell Aaron. you right now. We'll, we'll we'll cut to the chase. The only thing that I would rather have off the top of my head oh, would be think. the baseball bat that Clemens threw at Piazza. That oh, I want. that would be cool. That, that I would want. be neat. Yeah, um, and have Roger sign it. That would be a lot of fun. And if he could, get, do you think you could get both of them to sign it? Knowing the people that we know, if I managed to get my hands on that bat, we would call in a lot of favors, but we would make it happen. No, no I'm saying, do you think the players would sign it? Yes, because we would call in a lot of favors and make it happen. So I, I think- know, I know Mike Piazza's agent. Yes. So I could probably have it done for and the Piazza Mike side. Wants, I got his jersey signed, so I, I, maybe I got a little, little, little string there. Do you think if Roger signs it first, I bet I don't know if Piazza would sign it, but I think if Piazza signed it first, Roger would sign it without even <laughs> Roger being like, oh, yeah, I'm going to sign this back. Well, I mean, Piazza's, uh, excuse me, Roger's not signing anything with Hall of Fame on it, so he's got the time. The random, the, the random anti Roger Clemens get, getting in there. Um, but at the end of the day, oh, Max, speaking of which, I'm I'm sorry to interrupt you. Did you happen to see what happened uh, when Clemens's kid came into came in uh, relief against the Mets last week? Um, I did not. Oh, did he give up a grand slam? He gave up some runs, but they put it on the scoreboard. Uh, Clemens' father gave up all these runs to the the Mets, and it it was awesome. So, good job. Good job by the Mets. You're supposed to do it. I love love scoreboard operators. There's there's a couple in the minor leagues that was one of my favorites. One of them played as an organist, but he would play songs with everybody's, like, name. So, like... It was Anthony Gwen was coming up, and he, every time he came up, he'd play Father of Mine. Um, and then, like, a lot, they, there was always these little connections, and you'd, you'd be sitting there in the bullpen, like, trying to, what's the song? Okay, now, what's the connection? It was it was hilarious uh, up and down. We went we went total, like, left corner here. We've changed yeah, we everything. Yes. But we learned right now that David loves watching a man play with his organ. Yes, and I love a man uh, grabbing balls down in a scrum and showing everybody stepping out of it and being proud and that's the one time you can be can be in a scrub grab somebody's ball and be proud of it yeah (laughs) what i love is i cannot wait till next season of golden auctions on netflix to see how this wholesale went down because you know it's going to be the first episode Yes, I just okay. I'm gonna say this: How much money is he gonna get paid? Right, so 500, 500 minimum, five hundred start, four, four or five. You can buy it now. What? Where do you think that end point is? I don't know. I mean, you look back at some of the other balls. McGuire's was about three, I think, uh, and then Bonds was a million and a half. That went down. Uh, this one, it the, could go the, Bart, the Bartman baseball. The Bartman baseball. I, I don't remember how much that one. I, I'll guess probably about two and a half is where it's going to end up. Yeah, that's a, that's like exactly what I was guessing. I was guessing two two, two two five, something like that. I don't think it's not a four point five. It's not that. It's a, it's an incredible record. I do think it's slightly changed a little bit with the stealing bases stuff, and and we'll see. I mean, who how much knows? are you bidding? Never on know it? when people are going to step up, and it might even be be a card company, something like that, like a Topps that steps up and buys it and takes the ball and sells it, and like sells it in, in cards and stuff, and, and raises money that way to make more money than what they even spend on it. You never know what people are going to do with this ball now. Yeah, that could be interesting. How much are you willing to bid on it? What are you putting down? I again, nothing. I'll, I'll put like one hundred and fifty bucks and see if I get outbid. So you're telling me right now, if someone came to you, let's, it's never going to happen. But if they said, David, I got the Otani ball, I'll give it to you right now. Cash 250 K. Would you do it? Oh, yes. yes. You'd be stupid not to. Yeah, I'd be stupid not to. But again, those arguments only happen if you're talking about not selling it. Right. I can't sit there and have that. Go oh, Well, then I'm going to turn out. No, no, no wonder. That's just an investment. But um, speaking of investments, uh, oh, segue. That was actually pretty solid. Not bad. 